But it says progressives who cast uncommitted in the Democratic primaries this spring indicated they would be happier if Waltz was picked. They pointed to his remarks on CNN after 19% of the Democratic electorate in the state's presidential primary participated in the protest vote. Uh, says they are asking to be heard and that's what they should be doing. Their message is clear that they think this is an intolerable situation and that we can do more. And I think that the president is hearing that. Hang on. What presidential primary happened? <laughs> Who, who, who was who was the contender? Who was the opponent during the presidential primary? Yeah. I mean, if you want to consider Marianne Williamson's horrible run <laughs> as a contender. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. She wasn't like. There was no primary. Right. Yeah. I mean, there she was wasn't none. given a debate stage or anything. Yeah. There was no debates. Look, between uh, Dean Phillips, Miriam Williamson, Jank Uter, can we put him in there? <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure. Sure, okay. But at least two people who were Jewish mm. that were running against Joe Biden. And they were allowed to challenge Joe Biden. And yet they're like, well, during the Democratic primaries, their baby, there was no primary. Kamala Harris has picked her vice presidential pick for the 2024 elections. And some people who consider themselves to be progressive see this as a positive thing. If you stay tuned long enough, I'm going to tell you why it's not. But we're going to go into who her pick is and uh, why this ain't it. So let me share my screen really quick, and then I'll get your thoughts about it, Zabby, in, in, in a second. But let's just go straight to her website. Get, get it straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah. All right. Harris Walls. So with your help, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls ready to win this election. So Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. So she chose Minnesota governor Tim Walls to be her running mate. Now, by the way, while we're on her website, let's do some digging here. <laughs> do you see, Zavi, do you see any issues tab or policy platform tab? Just, just take a look. Really quick. Wow. No. I'm scrolling down. I'm scrolling down. Even down here, way at the bottom. Wow. Like accessibility, terms and conditions, your privacy rights, work with us, frequently asked questions, donate by mail, donate in store. Yeah. Do you see any type of issues or platform tab? Wow. Yeah. You know, I just kind of, I just kind of assume these people are mediocre and, and, and obviously, you know, have, have no policy, uh, uh, that they actually stick to. Um, but I'm, I'm shocked that her website doesn't have at least a page about it or something. That's wild. Also, let, let, let's just go into take action because that might tell us something. Take action? What is that? <laughs> oh, take action to elect Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. It's just an application. That's it. That's wow. it. Okay. Then meet Tim Waltz. What does it say about Tim Waltz? Okay. So we know there's no policies on here. It says together, Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz are moving for our country forward and fighting for working families, says Governor Waltz is a champion for America's working families. He enlisted in the Army National Guard when he turned 17 and served for 24 years, rising in the rank of command sergeant major. After attending college, thanks to the GI Bill, Tim Waltz served his community as a high school teacher and a football coach, taking his team to state championship for the first time in the school's history. He became a member of Congress in a Republican district by representing the needs of farmers in rural America. 
as Governor Tim Walz cut taxes for working families, lowered the cost of insulin, and eliminated jump fees, and protected women's rights to choose. That experience makes him the ideal running mate for Kamala Harris, who has taken on the big banks, led the fight for reproductive freedom, and stood with our allies against Putin's aggression during her time as prosecutor, attorney wow. general, senator, and vice president. Why? Question. Why in the world does she name Putin? And what's what's the reason for that? I personally would say they have nothing else. They they have nothing else to to say other than things like this. Because again, they don't have any policy to run on and and they don't have a great record to run on either. It's kind of funny because she mentions Putin and it's like, <laughs> well, wait a minute. What, what's up with the Russia phobia? Like, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. I'm no fan of Putin's, right? I'm I'm as much of a fan of fan of Putin as I am a fan of FDR, and I'm no fan of FDR either. Okay. With that being said, the fact is is that you have to have a boogeyman somewhere. If it's not going to be a Republican, then it's going to be some foreign leader that doesn't want to play nice or footsy with the West. Mm. I mean, am I wrong? Yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah. I think you're I think you're right on that. And it, and interestingly, I wonder if this kind of shift in messaging has anything to do with the fact that like there was this att attempted assassination uh, of Donald Trump. And that's why they've kind of moved off from uh, speaking, I guess, so uh, ex exaggeratingly, I, I, I would say, about Trump and maybe moving to, you know, talking about Putin in this way. So of course, there, uh, I think you, I think you're right about that. The thing is, is like all the this hyperbolic language that we're using against someone like a Donald Trump actually led to near dire consequences for either side of the party, which is really a uniparty. And so now they got to go back right. off, like, ooh, we 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 went a little too far. Y'all knew how far you were going to go. Yeah, okay. They went that far on purpose and they knew something like that was going to happen. But now that they don't want the the people to catch wind that they're doing this on purpose. So now they have to go back it off, back it off, back it off, back it off. So that we seem like we're more reasonable when in reality, they're a bunch of megalomaniacs. And I saw talk about both parties, both Democrat and Republican parties are full of megalomaniacs. Right. Yeah. Let's go back. Damn, this tea is good. Let's go back here. <laughs> also, let me enlarge this. I'm sorry, guys. So y'all can see a little bit better. Okay. It says, the shared commitment to working families draws complete contrast to Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. Instead of making life better for working families and focus on our future, Trump and Vance are committed to their extreme and dangerous Project 2025 agenda that will roll back American rights and freedoms, hurt the middle class, and threaten our democracy. Zabi, let me ask you this. Has Donald Trump and J.D. Vance endorsed Project 2025? They have not. No. So, as of right now, um, Kamala Harris just lied to you. Now, I'm not saying this because I do not support the Republican Party. I do not support the Democratic Party. What I'm saying is the truth. Donald Trump has distanced himself from Project 2025 because he does not endorse it, right? That is a heritage foundation plan that has been in the works for probably the last 40, 50 years. And some of the policies have been put in place by Democrat and Republicans. So with that being said, when they say, try to tag Project 2025 to Donald Trump, they're also lying. Both of these parties lie. You notice I didn't say Kamala and Trump lie. I said both parties. <laughs> because they're both full of people who lie on behalf of their boss, who they both have the same boss, the billionaire. Correct. Yep. 
Yeah, and I, I think I think it's also interesting again that that they are using the project 2025 and you can see how it's being used cynically to get votes, right? Because you can see how they're fear-mongering around the 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 language that is in Project 2025. And don't get me wrong, there's some there's some very uh, um, uh, not great things in Project 2025. But ultimately, mm-hmm. it just is is that it's a it's a tool to scare people uh, from voting for the Republican Party and and voting for Democrats. When once again, you're you're totally right. Both of them answer to the same exact people, which is the the capitalist ruling class in the United States. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, as far as the rest of, the rest of this. This is really just trying to make Tim Waltz look good to the people and make it look like, well, he's a common sense uh, working class guy from the Midwest. And this is why you guys should vote for him. And without really pushing, you know, you know, actual policy, which they plan to do as an administration. Right there's no plan set forward. And my thing is, is one of my biggest issues is it's just vibes, man. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Well, let me, let me ask you something. What, I mean, to me, what is, what is the difference between Tim Wallace and Bernie Sanders then? Like, why, why is suddenly the media painting Tim Wallace being a progressive as a good thing? That's 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 what I'm wondering. They want ultimately they just want to defang the left. They want to defang the left. And then and then if somebody like a Kamala Harris loses, then they're gonna blame the left for not getting on board with somebody like Ted Waltz. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I think that there is a, an effort to make this campaign kind of seem like the Obama 2.0 of, of 2008. I was watching this uh, report on CNN that was talking about the, um, the, uh, the pick of Tim Walz. And that's what mm-hmm. they were saying, you know, that, that, that this pick somehow is giving, you know, echoes of Obama in 2008. And, and it, it seems like the, the same con to me. Uh, it, it, it seems like the same con from 2008 portraying Obama and Biden as some kind of like progressive people that are going to cause real change when in the end, you know, again, both of them support uh, uh, the capitalist ruling class that we that we currently have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Let's go into this. By the way, guys, just to let you guys know, if you guys didn't know, George Stephanopoulos was actually uh, part of Bill Clinton's team when he was running for president back in the 90s. So that's how George Stephanopoulos got his job at ABC News. So if anybody doesn't know, like George Stephanopoulos is also a a, a show for the government, especially the Democratic Party, just to let you guys know. I just wanted to point that out. Anywho. Let's bring in Rachel Scott with the first reaction from the Trump campaign, Rachel. Yeah, we're just getting word in from Donald Trump's uh, campaign and also from the former president and his allies saying, uh, quote, even worse uh, than dangerously liberal and crooked Kamala Harris. Uh, That's the reaction uh, to this news that we are now reporting that Harris is picking uh, Governor Tim Walz to be her running mate. Uh, Just yesterday, George, uh, the former president Donald Trump was saying quite the opposite. In fact, Uh, during an interview, he said that whoever Harris chooses to be her running mate would be better than her. We know that the Trump campaign for days now has really been trying to recalibrate their focus, trying to figure out what exactly their strategy is because they wanted to run against President Joe Biden. Once President Joe Biden dropped out of the race, they now have tried to figure out what their new line of attack is, not only on Vice President Kamala Harris, but also now on someone who is going to be her running mate. Uh, when when President Biden was still in the race, we know there was that phone call between Senator J.D. Vance and also Vice President Kamala Harris agreeing to meet again, once again on the debate stage. We'll have to see what happens with a potential vice presidential debate and whether or not Governor Tim Walz will agree to debate Senator J.D. Vance, Donald Trump's running mate, George. Fascinating. Hmm. So looks like uh, the Trump 
campaign is, you know, kind of, they're kind of like, mm, we don't know about this guy. <laughs> but at the same time, there's there was another tweet that also, not a tweet, but it was, um, let me see if I have it here. Yeah. But it's like they said that on ABC News, but this is also being reported by Simon, uh, Simon Ateba um, mm. on Twitter. So let me share this with you guys. Because Trump only says one word. I'm sorry, two words about uh, Kamala Harris picking Tim Walz. Says breaking Trump responds to Kamala Harris naming Tim Walz as her running mate with two words. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm hearing two different things. Right. I I truly wonder what their what their strategy is going to be. Because I, I totally think that that reporter from ABC is right. That like this this was a whole different election just a few weeks ago when Joe Biden was in, right? Like at that point, it just felt like Trump was going to win this in a landslide. And now I wonder what they're going to uh, uh, attack Kamala uh, on. Because again, Kamala has a lot of things that Republicans think is right. Uh, <laughs> Like the fact that she, you know, uh, uh, incarcerated a bunch of brown and black people in in California, uh, yeah. you know, uh, extended sentences uh, for for uh, slave labor and and things like this. And so I wonder what they're going to actually attack. I I would think that they should keep uh, with with their um, you know their kind of rhetoric on immigration and inflation, since those two issues seem to be so important to regular americans but i wonder if they'll be able to like have the discipline of actually doing that uh or whether they'll go for you know more superficial things well uh w were you still a resident in california when uh kamala harris was the attorney general i no i wasn't okay all right um reason why i, w I was going to ask to see how, you know um your thoughts about uh some of the policies that she was uh ahead of when you were a resident there, but of course you, you left before that. Thank goodness. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you, you'd be streaming from prison right now. If I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, like what are you in prison for? I missed school too many times. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, I just want to go over one of the things that I wanted to bring out. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to Savvy Sabs for this. Um, she showed me this and I was just like, yeah, that, that he ain't it. So for anybody <laughs> who is especially against uh, climate change and wanting to be somebody who uh, pushes, you know, again, you know, for more, you know, renewable and green energy, Tim Waltz ain't it. And let's share this uh, solidarity with all the, the indigenous folks out there because y'all been sounding the alarm. So this is from Native News Online. It says, treaty people organized walk across Northern Minnesota to oppose line three. Wait, why is this going down like that? Anyway, hopefully you guys can still see it. I don't want that. Why is this thing just went down like that? That didn't do it last time. Oh, well. It says, this is from Outing, Minnesota. It says, on Sunday, more than three, than three dozen people left uh, Bacchus, Minnesota on a 160-mile walk to raise awareness about the controversial Line, Star, Line 3 tar sands oil pipeline that's currently being constructed in the northern part of the state. Organizers plan to make the trek over the next two weeks to Wisconsin Point, a 229-acre fr freshwater sandbar that sits on Lake Superior in northern Wisconsin, near the Minnesota border. It says we're walking because Governor Tim Waltz made a poor decision to permit line three to violate treaties. That's from Carrie Chesnick, an enrolled member of the uh, Oneida Nation of Wisconsin. It says we're walking for the next seven generations. It says this is the first organized walk to oppose legislation of the Enbridge Inc. Line three replacement project. Last month, dozens of people walk approximately 235 miles 
from Bacchus to the Minnesota State Capitol grounds in St. Paul. There they were joined. I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah. That's a that's a long walk. Yeah, that's a lot of walking. Said so they were joined on August 26th by hundreds of other walkers to participate in a rally at the Capitol that included more, more than 1,000 people. Their, their, their collective voice was to demand that President Biden and Governor Waltz honor treaties that both federal and state governments have with tribes. Uh, Chesnick says treaty is the mechanism that is going to allow all of us to protect the water, the land in the next seven generations. There's so much destruction going on in our world and our government can play a role in putting an end to it. Says the, according to Chesnick, many on the treaty walk also participated in the August walk. Some of their efforts to monitor construction of the tar sands oil pipeline and to pray for land and water. So this talks about how people like uh, Tim Waltz did not honor treaties for the First Nation people in Minnesota when it comes to trying to protect the water. So if that's the case, then those of you who are young, especially, that want to protect our environment, that want to walk away from the oil and gas industries, Tim Waltz is not going to be an ally in this administration. Also, recently, uh, Kamala Harris has also said that she will no longer oppose fracking. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you see, and, and again, you, you can tell then why these people are in the places that they're in, right? Because yeah. Tim Walsh uh, also supports Israel. Uh, and has done many votes in favor of Israel, also now has this uh, uh, approving of oil pipelines. And so, again, I, I feel that the capitalist class sees both of these people as people that will fight for their interests in the end. Oh, you ruined the surprise. Let's get into it. Yes, Tim Waltz is also a supporter of Israel. You want to know how I know? Let's get into it, y'all. Oops. This is also very damning of Tim Waltz. This article came out this morning. This is Forward, Jewish Independent Nonprofit. All right. Let's click that away. And let's enlarge this so y'all can see. Because I want y'all to be able to see this good and well. It says, what Tim Waltz VP pick means for American Jews in Israel. Israel. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, the runner-up for the position, faced backlash over his Israel positions. So, says Minnesota Governor Tim Walz is the vice presidential running mate for Kamala Harris, the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee announced Tuesday, which is today. The decision to choose Waltz is a expected to bring back to the Democratic ticket hundreds of thousands of people who voted uncommitted in the primaries to express outrage at the Biden administration's support of Israel in the face of ongoing attacks in Gaza after October 7th. So do you see what this was about? Y'all see exactly why she chose somebody like Tim Waltz, right? So, and people will say, well, that's a good thing because if she chose Tim Waltz, then He's not going to be a hardliner on Israel like a Josh Shapiro was. I got some things to say on that, by the way, but let's continue and move forward. It says the choice also avoids potential controversy over the other leading contender, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, an observant Jew whose positions on Israel and two-state solution have resurfaced recently along with accusations of anti-Semitism. The announcement comes two weeks after the Democratic Party leaders endorsed Harris as their standard bearer following President Joe Biden's unexpected withdrawal from the presidential race. Yeah. So it says Waltz, the 60 years old, says one of the final contenders for the role, along with Shapiro and Senator Mark Kelly of Arizona. As a former House member and second term governor, Waltz brings moderate views. We know what that means 
moderate <laughs> views that could appeal to working class voters in key battleground states, along with executive experience that would aid Harris in governing if she wins the presidency. Waltz coined the now popular term weird to describe the Trump advance ticket. Now, why is this word moderate? Why is that interesting to you, Zabby? Uh, again, I to me, when when people say, oh, they bring moderate views, uh, that means that they support capitalism. At the end of the day, they support capitalism. They have no problem with the existing system that exists in the United States. And it seems like Tim Waltz wants, wanted to have this record of like a reformist, you know? It, 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 and, and, you know, there are a lot of people, uh, I don't know if you saw Kyle Kalinske's uh, <laughs> gross tweet about the fact that he's so excited about Tim Waltz. But yeah, oh, I, 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 I totally I totally feel like it, 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 what it means is at the core, Tim Waltz is someone that the ruling class can rely on to to carry out their interests. And we see that not only with his support of Israel, but also his support of this pipeline. Yeah. So let's continue in this because uh, I got some things to say about the people who are <laughs> clapping their hands for this like they're in church. So. Uh, let's get to this, because this is the part that I really want to get into. Says Shapiro, a popular governor from the critical swing state with 19 electoral votes, has been mentioned as a potential first Jewish president since his 2022 gubernatorial campaign has been seen as a formidable choice for Democrats. But a campaign by pro-Palestinian activists and progressives to keep him off the ticket because of his stance on Israel and the campus protests gained steam in recent days. It fueled accusations that anti-Semitism derailed his nomination. By the way, first of all, uh, the uh, derailing of Josh Shapiro as being the candidate, the, the nominee for the ticket, is not fueled by anti-Semitism. Being pro-Palestinian is actually being pro-Semitic because Palestinians are Semites. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Google what a Semite is. And you'll also see Arabs in there. By the way, there are also Jewish Palestinians in Gaza, meaning it is not anti-Semitic to support the Palestinians at all. So, and it's also not anti-Jewish to support the Palestinians. Because now you're blanketing Palestinians as being all one religion. But Palestinians are not all one religion. So do not insult Palestinians like that. Because they're not all Jewish. They're not all Muslim. They're not all Christian. And some are not all atheist. They're a mix. Like America. Yeah. <sighs> this, this whole thing of, of anti-Semitism is is the latest version, honestly, that we've seen of identity politics, right? Mm -hmm. Come onto the scene and, and and do this thing where, oh, you know, if if you say a certain thing or criticism of Israel, you're now anti-Semitic. And I I feel like any any person uh, that wants to be serious about politics should reject this completely. Uh, of course, it is okay to to criticize a government that has killed uh, probably around 200,000 people, uh, innocent okay, civilians, uh, you know, it, it is it is actually a good thing to criticize that. <laughs> right? Let's continue, because it's going to get to the point that I really want to get to. Uh, so, it says, what are Wall's views on Israel in the war in Gaza? Says commentators describe Waltz as a Minnesota Lutheran, as a safe, no harm <laughs> pick, who could help Harris gain ground with traditionally Democratic voters who were disillusioned with Biden over his position in the war in Gaza. Mind you guys, uh, Harris has the same position. Anywho, says while compared to Harris, Shapiro, and Kelly, Waltz has no direct Jewish connections. Amer by the way, Harris's husband is Jewish. 
Anyway, American Jews are expected to overwhelmingly vote for a Democratic nominee as they have, have historically. But, says progressives who cast uncommitted in the Democratic primaries this spring indicated they would be happier if Waltz was picked. They pointed to his remarks on CNN after 19% of the Democratic electorate in the state's presidential primary participated in the protest vote. Uh, says they are asking to be heard and that's what they should be doing. Their message is clear that they think this is an intolerable situation and that we can do more. And I think that the president is hearing that. Hang on. What presidential primary happened? <laughs> who, 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 was, who was the contender? Who was the opponent during the presidential primary? Yeah. I mean, if you want to consider Marianne Williamson's horrible run <laughs> as a contender. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. She wasn't like there was no primary. Right. Yeah. I mean, there she was wasn't given a debate stage or anything. Yeah. There was no debates. Look, between uh Dean Phillips, Miriam Williamson, Jake Uger, can we put him in there? <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Okay. But at least two people who were Jewish mm. that were running against Joe Biden and they were allowed to challenge Joe Biden. And yet they're like, well, during the Democratic primaries, their baby, there was no primary. There was none. Yeah. They didn't get an ch actual chance to actually challenge Joe Biden. They said, Joe Biden is our nominee. And you know what? A lot of the Arabs who voted uncommitted said, Haha, the hell he is. We're not voting for anybody. And so now they're trying to get those people back. Wait a minute. Isn't that an argument for people voting third party for the election? Because if people are willing to skip out on Joe Biden for the Democratic primary, then that means that they would be powerful enough to skip out on Kamala Harris for the general election. And instead of staying home, they could just go to a third party and say, you know what? <laughs> because they want them to either stay home or vote for them. They don't want them to go third party. Yeah. Mm, mm -mm. I, I, I think that this, this is, um, again, this is such a cynical ploy, right? Because because they're trying to win back these disaffected fo voters who voted uncommitted with, with Joe Biden uh, while not actually doing anything that changes anything. I, I think that's like the sickest part, right? Is that the, the policy on Israel and the support that is going to be given to Israel hasn't changed at all. Uh, it, it's just, you know, presenting new faces in front of people and hoping that they'll forget. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and the funny part is, here's the crazy part. And Theron's right. Jill Stein is also Jewish. So you can't be, you can't say, oh, well, you're anti-Semitic. If you vote for Jill Stein, Jill Stein's Jewish. So you still, if if Joe Stein were to win, she'd be the first Jewish president. <laughs> Anywho, let, let's continue this. Let me get off my uh, identity politics. <laughs> uh, so it says, after the October 7th Hamas attack on Israel, Waltz ordered state flags to be flown at half staff and criticized those who did not condemn the attack. So this tells you about Tim Waltz. He said, if you do not find more clarity on Saturday morning, and if you find yourself waiting to think about what you need to say, you need to reevaluate where you're at. Walt said at a vigil head held at the congregation Bethel in, in Minneapolis. Hang on. Um, just a question. Where was the flags flown at half staff? Oop. Where, where were the flags flown at half staff for the thousands and thousands and thousands of Palestinians that have been slain by the state of Israel. Precisely. Yep. Did it fly, did it fly flags at half staff after the attack on Rafa? What about in Janine? 
I don't hear about that. See what I mean? Palestinian lives do not matter as much as Israeli lives, even to Tim Waltz. Let's continue. Uh, it says, early in early March, Waltz endorsed, endorsed calls for permanent working ceasefire just days after Harris drew praise from the progressive base by calling for an immediate six-week ceasefire in a speech in Selma, Alabama. Uh, so it says, Waltz, a retired army officer, visited Israel and the occupied West Bank in 2009 on a diplomatic tour in the Middle East, during which he met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. He is Bashar al-Assad. Gosh, people, no respect for, for, for others. He said he told uh, the Israelis that he believed that the growing number of Jewish set settlements in the West Bank were hampering the prospects for peace. Oh, you think? Now, <laughs> but Walt spoke at the annual IPAC policy conference in 2010 amid tension between the Israeli government and the Obama administration over the construction of settlements in East Jerusalem. It says, especially now when there's little tension in the relationship, it is important to hear what people are thinking. It says that Israel is our truest and oldest ally in the region with a commitment to values of personal freedoms and liberties surrounded by a pretty tough neighborhood. You know what? Wow. And surrounded by a pretty tough neighborhood, basically saying that all the Arab people around them, they're tough and they don't like them. You know, there's a, there was a phrase and, and I'm going to, I'm probably, I'm going to paraphrase it is that, um, Israel has enemies in the region, but before Israel ever existed, there was no enemies in the region. <laughs> no. Yeah, and, and again, I think that this shows why Tim Waltz is such a good choice for the Democratic Party, because yet again, he, he basically spews the same, I mean, BS that, that Joe Biden has been spewing and, and all of these Democratic uh, uh, party members have been spewing that Israel is fundamental to the interests of the United States. And it, and it goes to show that it is, that it is. The, the United States has a vested imperial interest in the Middle East, and, and Israel is the way that they get that accomplished. And so it, it's, it's not shocking at all to me that he supports this as well. Yeah. And then here's the piece that Resistance says he was also endorsed by J Street for re-election. Now, uh, let's just do this last piece. It says Waltz also voted with his party in favor to, to of aid to Israel and supported 2015 nuclear deal with Iran. Uh, earlier this year, he faced protests over his state pension funds and rested funds investments in Israel bonds. So he sent money to Israel. Yep. So he's a good little boy for Israel. <laughs> yep. Little Timmy Tim, good boy for Israel. Now, here's my here's one of my things that I also wanted to share. Because um let me share this. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to share this one piece really quick because some people are saying, well, Tim Waltz is a really good, uh, he's good on some issues and uh, I have uh, some pushback against that. Um, let me share this really quick. This is from Blakely uh, on Twitter it says, uh, try to distract all you want with this culture of war BS, but Waltz actually did ish for his state says some of the policies waltz signed into law in minnesota universal school meals strong labor protections cannabis legalization stronger lgbtq plus protections paid sick leave 100 percent clean energy by 2030 uh repro rights uh reproductive rights one billion dollars for housing gun safety and cut child poverty by a third so that's what they're saying oh he did all these good things right 
Um, one of my things that I have to push back on is um, yes, here are my notes. Uh, if you're talking about all the domestic things that people like a Kamala Harris and a uh, Tim Waltz could do for you, and you're going to overlook their policy on Israel, especially the genocide that they're content, that they're going to continue. Well, then genocide was never your red line, right? It was never your red line. Also to add to that, this is just like people in liberal social democracies that have all of their wonderful things. They're all their wonderful benefits, but they got them at the expense of whom? They got the, them at the expense of black and brown people abroad in the global South. Now you're turning your eyes away from the suffering so you can go back to fucking brunch. That's the issue. So, a, we get, for instance, we'll get, oh, we'll get a public option. Great. We'll get, we'll get uh, more, more protections for LGBTQ people. Great. Just don't show me the, the, the kid with their head blown off. Don't show me so I can vote for this person, even though they're blowing kids heads off. See, here's the thing. Let me ask, let me ask you something. Um, let's say hypothetically that uh, you get adopted and your adoptive father gives you all these really great things. He gives you a really good life, but then you find out that your father was murder for hire. <laughs> yeah. How would you feel if about the things that you're going to receive or have received from your father who's murdered for hire that basically use that money that he killed people with to get you nice things. How would you feel? Yeah. I mean, if it, that would feel pretty sucky because it is. <laughs> this is the exact same thing. You're getting all these nice things, all these nice policies off of the blood of people who are suffering, who are black and brown in other countries. This is exactly what they do in socially democratic countries. Look, look at look what happened in Niger. In Niger, they produce most of the, the uranium that is used for the nuclear power plants in France. And yet France has uses 70% 70 of their electricity comes from nuclear power plants which is supplied by uranium from Niger, and yet Niger, night over 90% of the households there do not have electricity. So they have great electricity, electric grid, off the backs of whom? See, this is the this is the demarcation between socialists and social democrats. Social democrats will go blinders earmuffs when it comes to the, the suffering of people abroad just so that they can have some health care, just so that they can have some clean energy. But when it comes to the exploitation of the people, well, that's just the way the world is. No, it doesn't have to be that way. And that's one of my biggest issues with social democracies. It doesn't have to be that way. And so when it comes to talking about uh you know when it comes to talking about all these nice things that we could possibly have what good is it if you know that that person has given you nice things also has blood on their hands in order to give you those nice things yeah i i think i think that there is definitely a you know this this reformist um uh, tendency 
gets gets the uh, support of people and is able to fool people. I mean, because this is very similar, right, to uh, some of the rhetoric from Bernie Sanders, right, of getting uh, Medicare for all, doing these progressive policies for people. But ultimately, uh, they, they don't see that there is a problem with the fundamental system. And like you said, yeah, the 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 improvements in some countries has definitely come at the expense of other countries, right? Yeah. And so for this, we, we need we need global uh, socialist revolution. That's that's what I believe. Yeah, let me and, and, and Mark Lamont Hill, I, I, I need to talk to you, bro, <laughs> because we need to have a conversation. Because what you tweeted earlier ain't it. This is what Mark Lamont Hill said. He said Kamala Harris choosing Waltz is very significant. It is a reminder that we can and must use our voices to get the outcomes we want. It also signals that VP Harris is listening to the voices of young grassroots pro ceasefire and other voters. Wow. This is very encouraging. Wow. Mark, you said you're a Marxist, right? Meaning you, you probably are a socialist. Bro, this ain't it. Because he spoke at IPAC. He's endorsed by J Street. Do you guys know who J Street is? For those of you who don't know, J Street is just the liberal version of IPAC. So here's the thing y'all need to know. Tim Waltz is what I call a liberal Zionist. He believes in the settler colonial project, but just wants Zionists to steal the land more nicely. The Democratic Party is full of liberal Zionists who want Israel to maintain the land theft, but they just don't want them to murder Palestinians so loudly. Just move them away so you can take their land. Don't, don't, don't kill them, just move them away, right? They want more humanitarian land theft. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> make no mistake. Walt is going to acquiesce to the Zionist demands just like Biden and Trump have, meaning that more Palestinians will die and more of their land will be stolen. Walt's ain't it. My God, it's like people are like, oh my God, but but he's easier on Israel than a Josh Shapiro. That's like comparing a liberal Zionist to a conservative Zionist. In the end, they're all Zionists. In the end, they all still support the land theft. Whether you kill me for my land or kick me out and leave me alive for my land, you still so you still sold my land. Yeah. I, I don't know I don't know what kind of Marxist uh, Mark Lamont Hill uh, says that he is, uh, but he's no Marxist that I recognize at least because you know ultimately Marxism is about having a class analysis uh, on history and how progress has happened, and so I, I think any any honest Marxist would not ever. Uh, do anything that is class collaboration with the ruling class. And ultimately, voting for Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz is collaborating with the ruling class because they are the ruling class's representatives. And 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 yeah, I, I mean, th this tweet saying that that Kamala is listening is is a lie, is a blatant lie. Uh, and, and I, you know, that's why I, I brought up Bernie Sanders and I brought up Barack Obama from from 2008 as well, because it, it just seems to me that the Democratic Party is trying to run this con yet again, a, a, a con of presenting supposedly progressive candidates and supposedly progressive policies while still having the same exact analysis on our political situation, which is that somehow capitalism can be reformed to make it better for people. And that's just not the reality of the capitalist system. Yeah. And my thing is, is like, if genocide is your red line, it should not waver. You need, then you got people like Kyle Kalinsky, 
that are <laughs> pulling the line for somebody like a Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. Didn't you just didn't you just endorse Dr. Jill Stein earlier? That's loud. And now you're talking about oh Tim Waltz. He he you know he's a good he's a good pick. Like what? Are you kidding, bro? Hang on. Cause I responded to him. That was one of the first things. That was one of the first <laughs> things I did earlier today. Cause I saw this. I was just like, what in the hell? This bile, this vomit, I'm telling you. They he said. Kamala objectively made the best possible pick. Look at that policy record, dog. We are so back. <laughs> He's so cringe. He's so cringe. Oh, my goodness. Look, I haven't been doing independent media as long as Kyle Kalinske has. But look. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. Some of y'all gonna clip this, and it is what it is. Some of the people on independent left, on independent media left, they only will argue so far against the system in order to keep money going. They will only argue so far against the system so that you donate money to their Patreon. They will only push so far so that you keep giving them super chats. That's what it is because ultimately they want to stay within the, within the two party system. They want to keep things going because they do not feel that capitalism is one of the biggest issues. They feel like, Oh, we just got to rein it in. We just got to put some bridles on it and we're good. They want to go back to FDR. Meanwhile, FDR didn't do shit for our black people. FDR didn't do shit for people who are Japanese who are interned. So they're trying to get back to that. Meanwhile, we're actually trying to help liberate folks outside of the two-party system. And so when people like who, who, are, who are clapping for this pick, they just turn their backs on Palestinian people. Let, I, I, people are going to be like, oh, you're being hyperbolic. No, no. Because if your red line, you said your red line was genocide, you lied. You lied to the Palestinian people. You lied to them kids that are dead. Those spirit of them kids that may still be living, whatever you believe, or to the kids that are still alive, you lied to them. You lied to the Palestinians that are still suffering in Gaza right now. You lied to the Palestinians that are suffering, that are getting their homes stolen from them in the West Bank right now. Shame on you. I am disappointed in Medea Benjamin of Code Pink that say, well, this is actually a good choice. No, Miss Medea. No, it's not a good pick. None of them are good picks. This is the same song, different dance that they've been doing ever since the beginning. And then so many people, you guys literally have other people who are outside of Duopoly that actually are with your values that you could go with. You guys got Dr. Cornell West. You have Jasmine Sherman. You have Claudia Dale, Claudia Dale Cruz. You have Dr. Jill Stein. If you're a libertarian, you have Chase Oliver. You guys could go in many different directions, but you guys still are stuck on that Democrat and Republican plantation. Dang. It pisses me off, bro, because it's like the answers are right there. Yeah. Because when we say something, it's like, well, you want Trump to win. <laughs> yeah, I, I you know it, some people I've heard people say that the uh, that the bleach is getting to Kyle's head, <laughs> and it's and it seems to it seems to be real, huh? You know, I, in in all seriousness, I really hope uh, that the that the money is good for Kyle. 
uh, because because ultimately, I think history will see him uh, as a traitor to the working class. You know, uh, ultimately, yeah. you, if if you are at all pushing for Kamala, for uh, Tim Waltz, for Trump or J.D. Vance, I think you fundamentally misunderstand and, and don't understand the political moment in which we are in in the amount of suffering that is happening here in the United States due to the 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 uh, system of capitalism, but also the crisis that is happening around the world. You know, I, yeah. I don't think any of these politicians is really up to the task of facing the crises that we're going to uh, come up against in the next few years. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, I just want to oop, I just want to share this as well. This is from my comrade, Nick of RBN. He said, Tim Waltz is a genocidal Zionist who opposes the BDS movement. This is the person the Bernie left is celebrating. So let's take a look. It says, Tim Waltz's record on Israel is generally supportive, reflecting a commitment to U.S.-Israel relationship, which is typical of many American politicians. Here are some key points about his stance on actions related to Israel. One, support of Israel. During his time in Congress, Waltz consistently supported measures that affirmed a strong alliance between the United States and Israel. He voted in favor of resolutions and bills that reinforced the U.S. commitment to Israel's security. Two, aid to Israel. Waltz has supported continued U.S. military aid to Israel, recognizing its importance to maintaining Israel's security and its qualitative military edge in the region. Three, two-state solution, like many of his Democratic colleagues, Waltz has expressed support for a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. He believes in the need for a negotiated settlement that ensures peace and security for both Israelis and Palestinians. A two-state solution will not work because that means that Israel will continue to go up against uh, Palestine uh, because Israel ultimately just wants to take the land. The Greater Israel Project already you know, shows that. And people like Netanyahu do not want a two-state solution. I argue that Zionist period just do not want a two-state solution because they don't want they don't want is uh, Palestinians to have their own state. And also that means if Palestinians have their own state, that also means they're going to have their own military, and they do not want that because right now Palestine does not have a military. But if they get their own military, they don't want that. Uh, four says opposition to BDS movement. Waltz has opposed boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, which seeks to pressure Israel through economic and political means. He has supported legislation and resolutions condemning the BDS movement. So thank you very much to Nick for that. Yeah. That's so breakdown. Yeah. So ultimately, um, you know, you could talk about all these things that you think you support. Uh, you know, when it comes to Tim Waltz on, and people will, and people will say, "Well, you know, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good." What What would you say to somebody who says, "Don't don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good"? I, again, I completely reject that because I would not vote for any politician that does not call out the the decay of capitalism and expose how that is the root cause of the problems in our society. Mm -hmm. I say that I am not rejecting the good for perfect. I am rejecting the bad for good. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, Tim Waltz does not have to support the uh, genocide that's going on in Palestine. Also, he could actually be doing a lot more for his constituents outside of the two party system than what he's doing right now. But he's really being a good little boy for the corporations. Yeah. So he's only going to go so far, just like Bernie Sanders only goes so far. Bernie Sanders still supports the military industrial complex. I mean, because he yep. <laughs> pulls in money for his state for the military industrial complex. So yeah. ultimately, what's the difference? And and again, I, I would point to Bernie Sanders as a great example of someone who sees the crisis of capitalism 
and is actually trying to help the capitalists avoid this crisis. Like that, that is, again, that is the reason why Bernie is, is such an advocate of progressive policies, is an advocate of, you know, Medicare for all when he used to talk about it or, you know, giving people better jobs, giving people health care, giving people housing. You know, these are things that, that have been proposed as reforms because the ruling class understands the crisis that we are facing, right? And they want to stop the overthrow of capitalism. But I mean, if they continue down this uh, uh, down this path, which they are going to continue down because that's just the nature of, of the capitalist system, uh, the, the working class is going to move and we are going to overthrow this thing at some point. So yeah. I, I look forward to that. Yeah. So before I let you go, I just wanted to share, this is my solution because people are like, well, what are your solutions? Here, here yeah. we go. I'm glad you asked. I said, Mark, Please don't be foolish. There's no pushing the Democratic Party to the left. The only way we can do anything for us is, one, organize outside of the electoral system. I mean, organize outside, get outside, right? Two, push for citizen ballot initiatives to help us directly. And I'll be talking about a ballot initiative in a little bit. Three, vote third party or independent. So these are just three things that we can do outside. And if you guys want to know how to organize, I actually did a, a, a stream on it on RBN two weeks ago. But you know what's funny about that? I get very little views on things like that. Mm -hmm. I get very little views on when we talk about, oh, this is what you need to do and organize. No, people don't want to watch it. But if I start talking and arguing with somebody online, then next thing you know, I get more people. The thing is, is that the most important stuff is not sexy. It's just not. Yeah. But it is the most important thing. Yeah. And yeah. if we really want to change this system, just because uh, you now have a more melanin abundant candidate and her <laughs> running mate is a more liberal person, a liberal Zionist, you suddenly take the Palestinian kids who put in front of your face and you're like, what Palestinian kids? I don't see no Palestinian kids. And I think that's one of the biggest issues to me is that you you put aside your values because of the new shiny thing. When in reality, they did that so that you would forget your values. Mm -hmm. And now we're looking at all you people that are now on the Kamala train. And we see you for who you are. And we don't forget. We're like Pepperidge Farm. We will remember like like Christina Aguilera said, thought I would forget, but I remember. Yeah, we will remember. So watch this space. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.